Okay, so we are going to head on now to our next tool. We're going to go to primitives. Um, this one here seems to have a lot of the similar kind of stuff we've already had before, except it's sort of located in one uh, uh, panel. And depending on which you select on, it will open up a new panel. So if you select on Taurus, you get the Taurus panel. And then it has all the um, same kind of stuff you saw earlier in some of the uh, the other videos I showed on primitives, you know, your X and your Y and your Z axes, and, you know, you can just click and boink. There you go. Uh, the one problem with this is, is that you can't see a lot of the stuff in real time um, while you're modeling it. It's sort of blind, and you have to kind of keep going back to adjust it, whereas some of the... Uh, some of these other ones uh, actually have live feedback, so you can actually see it in real time without having to, you know, delete, go back, and keep doing it till you get till you get what you want. So we're going to delete that. Let's try wedge. So it's same deal, same thing as we had before, except you can't adjust it in in real time. Um, spline cage. Something new. Uh, this is uh, something used for for spline modeling. Um, if I go into poly mode, each one of these yellow lines you're seeing is an actual uh, spline. So if you if you do a lot of work with spline patches and you're making stuff like possibly like limbs or something like that, you might use this spline cage as uh, part of uh, the building process and connect uh, a group of these together. Um, so you can select the amount of splines that are actually, and instead of having to build this whole cage on your own, you can make a whole bunch of different, different ones that actually make this cylinder shape. Like I said, it'd probably be more for like stuff like limbs, organic type of, uh, stuff, oh, but it not, might not necessarily be organic. It could be for, or, or not necessarily for characters, or it could be for something else. But, uh, I would think that probably in general, it would be used for for characters in most case most cases uh, for this type of uh, modeling but you can you can use spline modeling for things like cars and stuff and it's very very popular to spline model uh, cars with splines but uh, but yeah so let's actually let's uh, click on that one again and just see what kind of stuff yeah so I mean you got your axes you got sections okay so it's four right now going this way and then going around, whoops, and going around the uh, spline cage, there's like six, six sides, okay? So it actually, you can create um, a spline cage of whatever length, whatever sections, and the amount of sections of sides, um, I guess how tall it is, one meter minus one meter, um, radius, how wide this is, um, so on and so forth you know you can use the sliders to adjust it so uh, this is for spline modeling just like I said so everyone knows because this uh, this as far as I know will not show up in okay this show up on flyer from let's go texture okay and I actually does see it I'm not sure if this I don't think this will actually render properly unless it's turned into a, a poly okay splines uh, splines are, are invisible Unless they're turned into, uh, into in, actually turned into polygons in uh, inside of layout. Okay, um, and let's clear that one out, and let's move to random points. Okay, square sphere. Okay, so. This is what it whoops. This is what it looks like when it's a square. So it made random points in here. It doesn't show up in the texture view because they haven't, like I was mentioning before, they haven't been converted to um, they haven't been converted to polys. So this would not show up in um, in layout when you render it uh, because they haven't been uh, converted. Okay, let's uh, undo that. Let's Go back again, random points, and this time it goes sphere, and notice it makes it sort of in a 
more of a sphere shape this time. And these ones, the points aren't just around the the uh, uh, the perimeter of the the sphere or the edge or the polygon edge of a of a sphere. They're actually all through the actual uh, sphere shape. I know it doesn't look like a super sphere, but what it does is it randomizes points inside of sort of like an imaginary virtual sphere. Okay, and it looks like it's okay. No, just one in here. Oop. Oh, I didn't delete our uh, our other sphere object. That's why that's in there. Okay, let's. Uh, Clear object, don't save. Okay, let's go back again. Random points. So we can change the amount of points. We can have a hundred or we could have one or we could have a thousand, whatever you want. Okay. And you can view the looks like uh, there's like a fall off and a constant button. Let's uh Let's try fall off and see what happens. <clears throat> okay, let's move into this layer here and try it with constant and see if there's a big difference. Whoops. Let's uh, zoom in. I'm not really sure what the big difference is, but you know there might be some fooling around you can do with it to, to actually see if there's anything really different. But uh, so there you go. That's a random point uh, generator. Could be used for, I guess, a multitude of uh, different things. Once again, if you converted these to polys, it could be an explosion, or you might be able to add hypervoxels or something to this and do a whole bunch of nifty nifty stuff with it or attach objects to these somehow attach objects to these points. Like I said, there's a whole whack of things you could probably do with this. Okay. Let's uh, clear that out. And gear, same deal. The only difference is we can't uh, see this in real time. We can go in and keep changing the parameters. Okay, it's pretty much the same as the other gear uh, <clears throat> gear object that we create uh, created for the gear uh, tool. Let's go platonic and these make just random shapes. Cube and there just doesn't seem to be any controls. It just actually just makes uh, just makes the actual generic uh, object. Whoops, undo. Let's do that one again. So yeah, all different styles of uh, shapes. Looks like look reminded me of a. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, dice, D and D dice. Not that I ever played it, but I've seen them. I've seen them. So yeah, kind of cool. Okay, so I think we're done with that for now, and uh, we'll move on to the next part of the Create tab.